I do believe that God has put us on the face of the earth with so much promise and he goes a lot into trouble to make sure that we deliver as per schedule even when we fall even when we fail God sends the very best to restore us so that we can do that which he wants us to do and at the end of the day there is going to be a legacy that is left you see legacy is not about something that is talked about today and is forgotten legacy is about eternity and god is into eternity god wants us to do things that have eternal value to it i normally tell people when our football teams are beaten up that that football match has absolutely no eternal value to it and god is into the eternal value god is into this legacy business that once someone has done things they're going to reverberate throughout eternity today we talk about what you're going to do that is going to help you to create a life of legacy once again so stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. There is a particular point in my life that I was talking to one of my spiritual mentors, my pastor, and there's something that happened, and uh, I was wondering how my life is going to turn out because I had basically failed miserably, and I thought that you know that failure is going to affect the rest of my life. That failure is going to have a big inkling on how my life is going to turn out. That from that moment. That was a pivot, a negative pivot that my life is going to start going down and so on and so forth. And he told me there is absolutely nothing that you can do that can make you a failure unless you accept to become a failure forever. And God has given us an opportunity to rise up and to become the best versions of ourselves, even failure notwithstanding. even our own messes notwithstanding because god wants us to live this life so great so much that when we are not there our actions speak louder than our names themselves in fact our names become synonymous to the legacy that we left behind and that's what life signatures is all about life signatures is about a life well lived that it leaves a signature behind that people celebrate the existence of that particular life and there are very many things that you need to put in place so that that life can be a signature and we've been discussing those things in this episode we've been talking about a life of legacy that we were born to live a life of legacy we were born to live to such an extent that people will celebrate our existence people will be glad that we were born you know not just ourselves if you live a life that is just for yourself and for your family probably it might not be a life of a legacy worth noting about but i don't think that god created us so that we can just live for ourselves i think god created us and fashioned us in such a way that when we live to the fullness of our glory the fullness of our magnificence the way he designed us i don't think god created human beings just to you know come here and pay bills and just expire you know build houses for ourselves and 
have fun and go to the beaches and all that. I mean, I'm not saying that those things are bad. I'm saying that there's got to be something greater. That God can go to all this trouble. Not for us to live in beaches and beach houses and so on. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think God went into all this trouble so that we can live an impactful life and a life of legacy. Regardless of what we face, regardless of what we rise up against, regardless of what we face even internally and externally. That's why you see very many guys who have come from very pathetic backgrounds rise even to the top and they make ripples around the earth. When you talk about the Beethovens of this world, maybe they did not have it funny. They were some of them were blind, some of them had, you know, capac- incapacitated in one way or another. But they still are people that we talk about. In other words, we can overcome so much, so and God is on our side, so that that life of legacy can always be something that is a reality. And I've been saying that there are several things that you need to have in place in order to live a life of legacy. And we've been saying that legacy is not something that you're going to dictate. It is something that is going to take care of itself, but it's going to depend on what you did when you were alive. Today is the day for me to create my legacy. And today is the day for me to determine what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is determined by the following. We say that the first thing that is going to determine the kind of legacy that you're going to leave behind is simply this. Number one, what matters to you? We live in a day and in an age where very many people are living a life that doesn't matter to them. I mean, you've been given a life with some kind of template just to walk through that when you're born, you're supposed to go into nursery school and after nursery school, you go into X number of years into primary school, X number of years into high school, X number of years into university if you ever make it there, and then X number of years trying to find a job, and then X number of years, you know, trying to date a hot chick or a hot dude and getting cute kids and that's just kind of a template. And at the end of the day, if you ask someone, what really matters to you? You find that guys in their 40s, guys in their 50s, guys in their 60s, they are living a life that doesn't matter to them. But you see, at the end of the day, you are able to open your eyes and answer that question. That's what I've been telling people for the most part. Ask yourself that question. What matters to me? And the answer that you're going to get from that question should be an answer that impacts society, an answer that contributes to positively to society. You will find that that is what your purpose is all about. And let your life be themed around what matters to you. Let nobody lie to you that what matters to you is something that is going to come easy and is going to re- release you to a life of ease and bliss. Forget it doesn't happen that way the second thing that you need to do is to put systems what systems will you put in place that govern your productivity on a daily basis why because we're living in the most distracted seasons of our lives we're living in the most distracted generation ever I mean, how many gamings do we have on our phones? How many social media networks do we have on our phone? How many news channels do we have on our TVs? And how many FM stations do we have out there? How many friends want our attention? I mean, the most distracted generation since Adam is our current generation. And if you're going to overcome and live a life of a legacy, a life that is worth of a legacy, you need to be disciplined with a system. If you do not have a system in place, you easily find yourself being distracted by one thing or another. And today, in order for us to live a legacy, I am going to ask us, number three, to find the answer to this question. What is your difference? God created us in a very unique way. As in, right now we are 7 billion people on the face of the earth. Is As I'm recording this, 7 point something billion people on the face of the earth. Not a single one of us has the same voice print, has the same eye print, 
has the same fingerprint, has the same heart set. Not this, not any one of us, even those ones who are twins, have the same set of DNA. That is the uniqueness that God built in us. But the problem is, like I said in the podcast yesterday, we live and we are given a template to want to follow through that template. We are living to seek to be the same. We want to be like other people. We want to do what other people are doing. You know, take our kids to the schools that other people are taking this them to. We want to be like, dress like what other people are dressing. We want to be like the hottest celeb in town. Speak the way they speak. Dress the way they speak. The message of difference is not being heralded. We are heralding the message of sameness. We want to be the same this. That's why we go to school, we wear the same uniforms. <laughs> you know, do the same examinations. Ah. But God in his own wisdom created difference. Actually, these things we see, tribal clashes and so on and so forth. God instituted tribes. God instituted differences, uniqueness in people. Perhaps this is one of the greatest questions we need to pose. And uh, my mentor, Mike Murdoch, normally poses that question and asks, What is your difference? What is your difference? You are not the same as your twin brother or your twin sister. You are not the same as your father or your mama. You have a difference inside of you. And the most forgotten thing on the face of the earth is the difference that people have. People have a uniqueness inside of them, but they go from the time that they are born trying to fit into the template that they have been given. What a powerful question to answer. What is your difference? When you go to the United States of America, there are very many fast food eating out places. There is Burger King, there is McDonald's, there is KFC. They are more or less in the niche of fast foods. But if you want a good burger, you don't go to KFC, you go to Burger King. That is their difference. Their difference is in the burger. McDonald's Their difference is in giving you the meal the same day you ordered fast food. That is their difference. KFC, it is in their special, unique recipe in the way they crafted their chicken. That is their difference. They are doing more or less the same thing, but they, in the same niche, they have differentiated themselves. They have found a niche. They have found a specific place where they are good at, where they are passionate, at, where they are strong at. In turn, each and every one of these guys are profitable. No matter how much they are co- out competing each other, they are profitable in their own unique market share. Creating your difference or basically knowing your difference is what comes after you have put the functional systems in place that are talked about so that your purpose can be served. You cannot lean into your difference if you do not have systems in place. That is why we have several heavyweight boxing champions throughout the years, but each of them had a difference. Mike Tyson will be popping his head and in his fighting. Muhammad Ali will be doing ropa dope and all those things that he called them. Mayweather will be doing whatever it is that he does. He has his difference. But when you come where the rubber meets the road, when you come to really where the rubber meets the road, God made every one of us unique, not just in the way our body systems function but also in our calling. God gave us a difference. That's why T.D. Jakes is among us very many preachers, but he preaches with his difference. And I've seen very many guys trying to ape T.D. Jakes. The moment you're aping T.D. Jakes, you are stifling your difference. And I've seen very many guys trying to ape Mike Murdoch with his wisdom keys. The moment you do that, you are stifling your difference. Let me tell you this. You will never build a life of legacy trying to ape someone else. Trying to copy and paste someone else's strength is not going to result in you living a life of legacy. And my coach normally says, be a meaningful, specific. 
not a wondering generality that God created you to be a wonder not a cheap copy of somebody else to be a unique original not a cheap copy of somebody else you will never build a legacy if you're not going to delve into what your difference is and now people might say but you know you're being very specific with this difference thing can i do other things yes you can do many other things you know the bible tells you that you can do many things you can do all things through christ and i normally have a debate about that but god did not create you to do all things he created you and anointed you to do something unique something specific that's why he wired you that way why would god give you a gift of writing and all you're doing is clerking in the bank as a teller what happened to that difference of writing why would god give you a gift of speaking and all you're doing is accountancy at the back office what happened to that gift why will he waste that gift giving it to you so focus on your difference find what your difference is and lean into it that's one sure way of creating a life of legacy the fish leaves a legacy because it's not flying but because it is swimming in the lake in the waters the bird leaves a legacy the eagle we talk about the ego a lot but the ego cannot have that legacy that it leaves when it's in the water or when it's operating on the land only where it was supposed to operate optimally and that is where its difference is so find what your difference is and let your life revolve around that that's how you're going to build a life of legacy tomorrow we talk about something else but until then bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.